Francois, uh, the car has been a, both an instrument and a symbol of national power in the world. Uh, we're entering into new times and new equations for cars. Uh, are there countries or regions that have particular advantages? They're likely to emerge at the head of the line for driverless cars, electric cars, and specifically, will the driverless electric car of the future be a European or a national product? No, it's a good question. When you look at the dynamic of the world right now, the most pushing country is China. China has technology at the scale, and China has a big issue because they're building the infrastructure for the, for the country, and they don't want their economy to depend upon the price of oil. Elon Musk yesterday signed a huge agreement to build uh, another gigafactory to build not only the Model 3, which will be uh, the mid-range car, but also uh, the battery. And they want, by 2021, at least 25% of electric cars. So it's a political regulatory driven by the states. If you go to, to the US, it's a different equation. Uh, the US has won, have won the battle of internet, the cloud, and they, they're winning the battle of data. So there is two main things which gather data. is first the car, because the car, when it's connected, Tell everything about your life, um, what time you go to work, how you drive. Um, they can hear you as well, so you need to be careful, and at home. That's why you have all those personal assistants popping up everywhere, because they will know at what time you go to bed, if you have a cat, how many kids, what you see on TV, what you talk about, and all the information will go into the cloud. And definitely, today, US is pushing very hard, but in terms of technology, the game of the US is to build an infrastructure in the cloud which, which is mutualized and the rest of the world try to connect to, uh, to the cloud. And they are very, very advanced right now. Europe is late. Europe is a me too uh, attitude. So they've tried to, uh, to create internet giant. They failed. On the cloud, I was chairman of the cloud research industry group for Nelly Cruz. And after three months, I said, dear Nelly, we lost the battle. And now for the data, they want to be part of the game in regulating um, and putting rules around, private, around privacy. But if you close your world, you will not have, have access uh, to the services. The more you open yourself, the more access you have, the, the better service uh, you have. But coming back to what has been said by my uh, two colleagues, I'm very bullish of the future because with all the technology uh, um, progress right now on the power of the chips, the power of the cloud, because you have trillion lines of codes that can be used everywhere uh, into the world, and the power also of the R&D that we have, you will see an exponential uh, progress in this industry very soon, and the future will be sooner than expected, I think. I was stunned to learn the other day that China today manufactures more electrical vehicles than the rest of the world put together. It sounds like we're in for a repeat of what happened with uh, the digital information revolution where the United States exploited it. China decided to compete and capture, and Europe decided to accept and regulate. So we may be back there. It's me too. <laughs> Patrick. Uh, this coming world of swarms of drones delivering packages, I'm using journalistic hyperbole, but you'll put me in order. They won't want me. <laughs> and, and helicopter borne taxis, uh, how well prepared are governments to begin to regulate that? Uh, is it at a, a point where they are already falling behind? Actually, it very much depends on. Uh, uh, on the authorities we're talking about. Uh, obviously, the traditional one, like um, I'm talking about now, aviation authorities, like the FAA in the US, like the ASA in Europe, they are very cautious, uh, and we believe rightly so. Uh, they are very cautious because they have the, their wealth of experience, and for many years, they've been, uh, they've been uh, certifying uh, 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 commercial aircraft manufacturers, helicopters aircraft manufacturers, to carry people at very high altitude, very high speed. 
So they have to be careful. On, on I would say, younger economies, people are more bullish. Um, so some are still a little bit in a me too. I mean, for example, in Singapore, they're on the one hand very, very pushy to get a solution very fast, very early. But on the other hand, when you talk with them, say, well, we'll wait to see what the FAA is going to do, and then we'll kind of copy-paste the FAA. Then we've got uh, the, uh, uh, the Gulf countries and, and the Middle East, and these are the most precious today. They really want a solution. They want to be the first one to have flying cars in their cities. It's a question of uh, national pride for them. So they're pushing hard. So I think here the regulators are almost asking uh, the industries, you know, how they can accelerate, what can they do. Uh, so it's not, so it's a little bit di different dynamic from the normal one, which is the industry pushing and the authorities uh, calming us down in terms of uh, ma making sure uh, everything is, 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 is done by the book. And uh, China, of course, is, uh, is a key player. It's the biggest manufacturer of drones today. They do like 80% of the drones flying. You've got companies uh, doing drones today that employ uh, 5,000 people that have research centers in Europe, in the US, uh, and they are very, uh, believe me, it's cutting edge technology. This is, what they do is extremely impressive. I was in Shenzhen a couple of weeks ago, meet with them. Uh, it's absolutely fascinating. So here the question on, on China is, are they going to leapfrog the helicopters? Because there are almost no helicopters, or very few helicopters in China. The question is, will they jump directly from having almost no helicopters to having kind of flying cars and electrical ones? So, and it goes very well with, uh, indeed, as we said, we all know that uh, in certain countries are really pushing very hard for environmental matters for various reasons. And the Chinese do have a huge uh, pollution issue in, uh, in large cities. So yes, a huge pu uh, push on electrical, but there's also a push to uh, try to resolve the, uh, the traffic uh, issues they have. And uh, that could be one of them. And yes, they are, uh, they are very likely to be the first, either the Gulf or China, will be the first place where it will go. And the limiting factor and the, the, the people deciding the timing won't be the industrials because we'll have solutions fast. It will be the regulators. It'll be? The regulators. The regulators. Um, Eve, my question for you comes uh, on the governance side of this. Um, so much of our communications today pass through space, uh, including uh, in many countries, including my own, uh, a certain dependence on command and control systems of um, our nuclear forces and our communications with our military. Um, satellites are quite vulnerable to space attack, it seems to me, but perhaps you can enlighten us on that. Are governments beginning to figure out how to offer protection for these satellites that are off in space, and uh, how would they do that? Oh, in fact, uh, you have a number of different satellites, and uh, most of them are completely protected against this kind of attacks. But of course, after that, it's a race. You have a protection, and the people invent something else, and so on. But uh, I am uh, sure that uh, if someone wants uh, really to attack the satellite system, it's probably easier to attack the software on ground than to attack the hardware in space, because uh, we know that there are many, many cyber attacks, and uh, it's probably easier than to attack satellites. But uh, we have satellites which, which are protected, and uh, I do not know, and I think that it doesn't exist, an example of a satellite which has been attacked uh, from the ground. But it could happen in the coming years, but uh, there is a lot of protection, and uh, I can tell you that it is not so easy to attack a satellite. It's very difficult. But I gather that in some countries, China is one example I hear cited, there is quite an effort underway to develop systems that can attack satellites. Yes, to develop systems. But uh, I do repeat, I think that it's much easier to do it on ground than to do it in space, because uh, without uh, entering into details, there are some other countries in China which develop uh, countermeasures to avoid such attacks. Well, I want to thank the panel for a really invigorating discussion that uh, has given you some inkling about what lies in wait for you and what uh, advantages and uh, dangers that technology brings to our modern world. And uh, so we end the session here. Thank you very much. <laughs>